Hello, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 7, Using exp Negative Exponents. Your learning objectives for today is to be able to describe the meaning of a negative exponent in equations that represent exponential decay and write, a, write and graph an equation that represents exponential decay to solve problems. So as you can see, we will be continuing to look at exponential decay problems, but now we're kind of adding in this idea of negative exponents. All right, so let's take a look at the first activity. So it says, how would you rewrite each of the following as an equivalent expression with a single exponent? So um, a couple lessons ago, we looked at this idea of when you multiply numbers with the same base, you can just add in, add the exponents together to get a single term. So for this one, we would do two to the fourth uh, times two to the zero power. We would just add four and zero, which is four. So this is going to be 2 to the 4. For this one, we're going to do 4 plus negative 1, which is 3. So this would be 2 to the 3rd power. The next one, we would do 4 plus negative 3, which is just 1. So that's 2 to the 1st power. And then 4 plus negative 4 is 0. So 2 to the 0 power. So just a few reminders when it comes to exponents, um, especially negative exponents. Um, 2 to the 0 power, remember anything raised to the 0 power is 1. We reviewed that a few lessons ago. Um, and then also negative. So when we have negative exponents, it doesn't mean that our answer is our, not answer, but it doesn't mean that it's going to simplify to a negative number. It doesn't work that way. What it tells us is that we are going to be um, ending up with numbers less than 1, right? So 2 to the 4th power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. 2 to the 3rd power would be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 2 to the 1st power is 2. 2 to the 0 power is 1, right? And so we're, if we were to continue down in that pattern, we would end up being into the fractional area. So whenever we have negative exponents, we are going to rewrite those as a fraction. Um, so we kind of invert it. So um, it now becomes 1 over 2 to the first power, which is 1 half. For 2 to the negative second power, that becomes 1 over 2 to the second power, which is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative third power would be 1 over... 2 to the third power, which is 1 eighth, and then so on and so on. So you can see that as we get into the negatives, um, our, our numbers don't actually equal negatives, right? Instead, they just become fractions, and those fractions get smaller and smaller and smaller and so on. So we've talked about this idea before that anything raised to a power is never going to equal zero unless unless you then take that number and multiply it by zero. But when you're doing powers, it never ends up equaling zero. It always ends up um, getting into these fractions, which just get smaller and smaller. All right, let's take a look at the next activity. So a marine biologist estimates that a structure of coral has a volume of 1,200 cubic centimeters and that its volume doubles every year. So you do have four questions to go along with this. Go ahead and pause the video and work on those four questions. All right, question one says write an equation in the form of y equals a to the b a times b to the t power, representing the relationship where t is time in years since the coral was measured and y is volume of the coral in cubic centimeters. Um, in this case, keep in mind, you do need to figure out what the numbers a and b are in the situation. So if you recall, previous lessons, we've talked about how this number is always the initial value, whereas this number is our growth factor. So if we look here, it says the initial value is 1,200. So I know that A is going to be equal to 1,200. And its volume doubles every year. So B is going to equal 2 because when you double something, you multiply by 2. So my equation would just be Y equals 1,200 times 2 to the T power. Question two asks you to find the volume of coral when t is 5, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 2. So I'm going to just go ahead and start with 5. So when it's 5, I'm going to do 1,200 times 2 to the fifth power, which is 1,200 times 32, 
and 1200 times 32 is 38,400. Okay, let's repeat that. So now for one, it's just gonna be 1200 times two to the first power, and two to the first power is just two, so 1200 times two. So that is 2400 or 2400. For zero, I'm gonna do y equals 1200 times two to the zero power. So that's 1200 times one, which is 1200. Okay, now we get into negative. So this is where we're gonna to wanna to use that idea that we just talked about in the previous activity. So 1200 times two to the negative first power is just 1200 times one half. So again, two to the negative first power is just one over two to the first power, which is just one half. So we're taking half of 1200, which is 600. And then last one, negative two. 1200 times two to the negative two power, that's gonna be one fourth. Again, so two to the negative two power is one over two to the two power, which is one fourth. So we're gonna take a quarter of 1200, which is 300. Okay, question three, what does it mean in this situation when T is negative two? So when we talk about negatives, we're talking about prior in this situation. If the initial measurement is when they found the 1200 cubic centimeters of, um, of coral, two, we, the negative two would just represent two years before they took the measurement. So two years before they took the measurement. Question four, in a certain year, the volume of coral is 37.5 cubic centimeters. Which year is this? Explain your reasoning. So there's a couple of different ways that you could have gone about this. One way is to set up basically an equation. So 1200 times two to the T power is equal to 37.5. So from here, what I can do is if I divide by 1200 on both sides, so this tells me that two to the T power is gonna be equal to 0 0.03125. Um, and then from there, you can just kinda figure out, well, what is the T need to be in order to make this, uh, this decimal? And I know it's going to be negative because it's going to be less than two. And you could just kind of do a guess and check. So we did t to the negative two. Negative three would be um, one eighth, which is definitely not equal to that. Then for the four, right, so this was negative three. If we did t to the negative four, that would be equal to one sixteenth. And 1 16th is 0 0.0625. So it's not that. T to the negative fifth would be 1 over 32. And 1 over 32 is equal to 0 0.03125. So we can see that it is indeed negative 5. So 5 years prior to measurement. Another way you could have just kept extending from the negative two until you got the number that you were looking for. Um, so it's really up to you on which method you want to try. I wanted to show you this method though because it is a it is more algebraic in a sense. But again, you could have just done more of a guess and check, which is essentially what we did anyways. All right, so we are going to skip activity three. So you can just go ahead and cross that out. And let's move on to activity four. All right, in this problem, it says a person took some medicine but does not remember how much. Concerned that she took too much, she has blood tests every hour for several hours. Several hours. So go ahead, pause the video, and answer these three questions. 
All right, question one says, time T measured in hours since the blood test and amount of medicine in her body M is measured in milligrams. What is the growth factor? That is, what is the B in the equation of the form M equals A times B to the T power? So if you remember, growth factor is how much is left, not how much she has lost. So to figure out the growth factor, we just take um, an amount, so in this case 50, divided by the previous amount, in that case 100. 50 over 100 is 1 half, so we know that the growth factor in this case is 1 half. So B is 1 half. And then we also know, uh, they want to know what A is. So A, I know it's typically we describe it as the initial value, um, but because we don't really know the initial value, we're going to uh, describe it as just what would the y-intercept be is. So if t is 0, what is a? And in this case, a is 100. Next question says, find the amount of medicine in the patient's body when t is negative 1 and negative 3. Record them in the table. So let's start with negative 1. So if my equation is 100 times 1 half to the t power. If I do negative 1, so n equals 100 times 1 half to the negative 1. Now, we've talked about when uh, whole numbers are being raised to the negative power, but we haven't really talked about when it starts as a fraction. So it's the same idea, right? When we had a whole number being raised to the negative power, we would, we would invert it and make it a fraction be one half to the negative to the positive first power and um, it's the opposite when it's a fraction you're gonna still invert it but now it becomes a whole number so two to the first power so for this one we're gonna be doing 100 times two to the first power which is just two so in this case it's gonna be 200 milligrams so at negative one hours it would be 200 all right, for negative three hours, I'm going to do m equals 100 times 1 half to the negative 3. So I'm going to invert it. It becomes 100 times 2 to the third. And then 2 to the third is just 8. So I'm doing 100 times 8. So that's 800 milligrams. So in this context, what does t equals 0 and t equals negative 3 mean? So t equals 0 is, remember, it's not the amount of medicine she took um, to start with. In this case, the context of the problem is saying she doesn't know how much she took. Um, all she, But we do know that this 100, was, sorry, 100 milligrams, this represents the amount of medicine that was in her bloodstream when the doctor did the first blood test. So t equals zero is going to be, um, t equals zero means the time when the doctor took the first blood test. So t equals negative 3 would be 3 hours before the doctor took the first test. So 3 hours before the first test. Question 3 says the medicine was taken um, when t is negative 5. Assuming the person did not have any of the medication in the body beforehand, how much medicine did the patient take? So we can use that same idea. So we have 100 times 1 half to the negative fifth power, which is 100 times 2 to the fifth power. 2 to the fifth power is 32. So we're doing 100 times 32. So that means we've got 3,200. So we know she's took 3,200 milligrams. All right, there are two more questions. 
Um, if you went ahead and did them already, fabulous, just continue watching. If you haven't had a chance to do those two, go ahead and pause the video and do the next two questions. All right, so the next thing we have to do is plot the points um, whose coordinates are shown in the table and then make sure to draw and label tick marks on the axes. So with this uh, graph, we're gonna have to do a little extra work because it's not really set up for us. So on my x-axis, this is going to be my hours. So I negative three, two, negative one, one, two, and three. I'm going to go up by 200. Maybe you went up by something different. That's okay. All right, so at negative 3, I know that that was 800. So I'm going to plot that point right there. Um, negative 2 was not really in the table, but maybe you figured it out. Um, if you did, you should have seen that it was 400. So that would be right here. Negative 1 was 200, um, 0 was 100, and then we had 50 and 25, so 50 and then 25. Um, you could go even a step further and go all the way to 12.5 if you wanted to, but not necessary. All right. Based on the graph, when do you think the patient will have 500 milligrams of medicine in the body and no medicine in the body? So for question A, we know that at three hours before she took the medicine, it was at 800, and that two hours, it was at 400. So we know that she's going to have um, somewhere between two and three hours before the first blood draw is when it's going to be at 500. So some time between two and three hours before the first blood draw. And then for the next question, when will she have no medicine left in the body? Um, and you the hard part is that mathematically speaking, this this um, representation will never get to zero. That's the whole point of exponents. Exponents is that they don't really reach zero, um, but we know realistically that the medicine will leave her body at some point. Uh, it's so you could keep going until you get to you know about point one. Um, the medicine when it falls to be about point one milligrams. And that's at about 10 hours. Um, but it's really hard to tell because our model doesn't reach zero. So, it, you know, we don't really know. But maybe about 10 hours, but it's hard to tell because about 10 hours. But it is hard to know because our model will never reach zero. So today we looked at some situations where negative values representing times are meaningful. Um, let's suppose that we had um, the equation P equals 90,000 times three to the T power. And P represents the population of a colony of bacteria and T represents the days since Monday. Um, in this case, if T was a negative value, we would be talking about the time or the number of days prior to Monday. So the Sunday, the Saturday, whatever. So how many, how much was in there prior to Monday? Anything positive would be after Monday. So that's it for today's lesson. Don't forget to submit and you can start working on your cooldown. Thanks for watching.